الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهذا كتاب أنزلناه مبارك فاتبعوه واتقوا لعلكم ترحمون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله يرفع بهذا الكتاب أقواما ويضع به به الآخرين أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers and my young friends It is a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a great favor that he has inspired us and given us a tawfiq to sit in such gatherings where the lessons of the Quran and to connect to the Quran Sharif are imported. The Quran is the most beloved kitab and the most beloved thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that Al-Quran ahabu ilallahi mas samawati wal ard. That the Quran is the most beloved thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most beloved throughout the whole world beneath the skies and above the earth. And we can realize from this that whoever connects to the Quran, whoever gets close to the Quran Sharif, then ultimately he will also be beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentions that the Quran is so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he mentions, إِنَّ Allah يَرْفَوْ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ يَقْوَامَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates nations, elevates people because of this kitab, because of their connection, because of their obedience through the kitab, because of their recitation, because of their understanding of the kitab, because of carrying out according to this kitab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevates that status. And on the other side, those who are neglectful of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demotes them and he puts them down. In the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, he made a deputy in Mecca. His name was Nafi ibn Abdul Harith al-Khuzai, deputy of Umar radiallahu anhu. Umar radiallahu anhu's khilafat was in Medina Munawwara and his deputy in Mecca. One day it so happened that Umar radiallahu anhu went to Asfan and this deputy of his Nafi ibn Abdul, Abdul Harith, he was also in Asfan, a journey from Makkah Mukarama. So Umar radiallahu was very straightforward and very particular. So he asked him straight away, that Mastakhlafta, who have you made, who have you appointed behind you? You're out of Makkah, you're out of the territories, you're out of the boundaries, who, who have you put behind you? Who's going to look after the affairs of people? So Nafi ibn Abi Abdul Harith says that I've made Abu Abza, Mawla Lana, my slave, I've made him the deputy. I've appointed him. So Muradiyan says, a slave? You've made a slave? You've appointed a slave to look after the affairs of the people of Mecca? He says, yes, exactly, I've made a slave. But not a normal slave. Innahu alimun bi kitabillah. He's such a person who has knowledge of the Quran. He's a half of the Quran. Wa alimun bil farayit. And he knows the obligations of the Quran. He's not a normal slave. He's a slave who has knowledge of the Quran, who's in hymns of the Quran, he understands, he prays. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, that Amma nabiyukum faqar qal. As for our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said this, those people who connect to the Quran, Allah will elevate them as slave, who's got no value in people's eyes. Today he's become appointed. He's been given a status, he's become the, de- he's become the head of Makkah. Not on the basis of who he was, on the basis of what he knew, the Quran. So Alhamdulillah, when we sit in these majalis, when we sit in these gatherings where the Qur'an is being, the lessons of the Qur'an are being imparted, and we gain knowledge, then Alhamdulillah, from yesterday, today we are more close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We become more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Qur'an is so beloved that we have to make sure that every person, the center of his life is, is the Qur'an. We do whatever we do is within the limits of the Qur'an. And because this Qur'an is so blessed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
that wahada kitab anzalna mubarak this kitab that we have revealed is very very blessed fattabi'uhu follow it and whoever follows it then surely inshallah he will also become blessed he will become very honorable and as believers we have three requirements three rights the quran has three rights of us and it is very important that we fulfill these rights the first right is that we recite the quran first and foremost we recite the quran on a daily basis in the morning we should pray surah yasin as some said whoever prays surah yasin in the morning is the whole daily affairs will be made easy for him. whoever prays surah mulk at night the uh, the punishment of the grave will be uplifted from him he will not get punishment in the grave and besides that those who are non who fast should at least try to pray one para one para hazrat hazrat sheikh al hadith Dr. Muhammad Zakaria sallallahu used to say that to recite the Quran once in the whole year is wajib. To do one katam a year is wajib. Whoever does not do one katam is sinful. So the first and foremost duty upon us is that we recite the Quran Sharif. And none who fasts one para and who fasts at least three paras. But if you can't do one, then at least start with half. If you can't do half, start with quarter. If you can't do quarter and start with one ruku but punctuality daily one quarter daily one ruku and slowly slowly you will see that inshallah this one ruku will give you the strength will give you the encouragement to do two rukus and very quickly and surely you will see that you are praying one part as well and then you don't stop there you you keep moving because the Quran is the more you pray the more you get from it the more you pray the more barakah comes in your life when one person went out for talab ilm so he went to his ustad and he said what should i do He said make sure you stay hold hold firm on to Quran. Hold firm on to the Quran. He's going for hadith. He said hold hold firm to Quran. So a person says that I tested that the day I read a lot of Quran I automatically memorize a lot of a hadith. And those days that I was uh, lack I was lacking and I was slacking and I was lazy in reciting the Quran automatically my recitation of hadith and my memory of hadith dropped. The Sheikh Zakaria Rahmatullah Alayhi, everyone knows what kind of a person he was. He was a Sheikh Al Hadith for years, many years, 35, 40 years in Saharanpur Darul, teaching Hadith daily. He had his disciples, murids that he had to see. He had other, he had other duties, giving talim, tarbiyat, giving bayans here. But besides that, he used to recite the Quran daily. So one person asked his kadi mekas, as a Moisu Mutala Sabrahu to Lali's brother, as a Malab Durahim Sab in Zambia. But what was Hazrat Sheikh Rahmatul Lali's Mahmud? How much did he used to recite daily? So he said on a daily basis he used to recite eight to nine juz. After all these, and we're talking just twenty years ago. And after him, his Khalifa, Hazrat Sheikh Muf- Fakhir Umat, Hazrat Mufti Mahmud Al Hasan, Gangoi Rahmatul Lali. Abu Mufti Sabz, I think teacher and also Sheikh. He once he used to, in his dars he used to say frequently to the students, "Kibay Quran paro, Quran paro, Quran paro. Make sure you hold on to Quran. Make sure you hold on to Quran." So one student that came from Bangladesh, he says that one day I said to him, "Hazrat, how much do you pray?" Out of Because I was young, I asked him, "Hazrat, how much do you pray?" So he goes to me, "Kibay yeto Allah me darmi ani." You can't expose everything. This is between me and Allah. But my point is, make sure you pray Quran. He said, "No, Hazrat, we know it's between you and Allah, but for our encouragement, tell us how much do you pray daily." For the ummah, he used to write fatwa. His fatwa is very, very famous. His twenty, twenty-two books of fatwa. He says daily I should do fifteen paras. Fifteen paras. And when you pray like this, then Allah takes care of like this. These people who became great luminaries was not because of just because of their amal. So the first and foremost thing we have to do is recitation of the Quran. Start with one ruku, fix a time, fix a place. That I'm going to sit in the masjid after salat al-maghrib, or I'm going to sit at home after I finish eating. Just like we have other duties now in, in our lives, we have other responsibilities. I go, you, I go to work, so everyone knows at nine o'clock I have to leave the house. I have to pick the children at three o'clock. Three o'clock, whatever happens, whether friends are here, I'm sorry, I have to go to pick the school run. Same with the Quran. We have to show importance. Okay, 
after maghrib in the masjid whatever happens what let what may come i have to do my one my two rakus so this is the first and foremost point the second right and the second responsibility every believer has for the quran is to understand what allah is saying what is allah saying to us in the quran what is allah what what guidance is he giving us but every person does not have the capability to open the tafsir kitabs and read so majalis like these take place and we should make ourselves available and we should come as seekers that we need this is for me i need this i am in need of this i need to know what my allah is saying to me mam ghazaram tulai says that when we get a letter from somebody our close friend but we don't understand language somebody in saudi he sends us a letter but he writes in arabic and we have very close connection with him but we don't understand arabic so do we, what do we do we become restless we run to him we run to him, we run to him. do you understand this could you translate this one and we read it and when he reads reads it to us we listen attentively what is he saying to me? and every now and then we also open the book and we open the paper and we start reading that what what's my friend saying to me allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the quran and we should also what allah what's allah saying to me what is allah asking from me ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu the the uncle son of rasulullah sallallahu ibn ammi rasulullah sallallahu the uncle son of rasulullah sallallahu his student was imam mujahid ram the people that wrote imam mujahid's biography they say imam mujahid ram tulali went through the whole tafsir of the quran from alif lam till wan nas from surah fatiha till the end with who with the uncle son of rasulullah sallallahu ibn abbas how many times 30 times in his life 30 times he read the whole tafsir don't you know the zeal inside this is a yearning that what is allah saying to me what is this kitab what is allah saying to me in surah yusuf what is allah saying to me in surah hud what lessons are there for me ibn taymiyah rahmatullahi very very big ali he says rubma talatu li ayatin wahidatin alf tafsir for one ayat of the quran to understand it properly to get to the bottom of it sometimes i would read 100 tafsirs 100 tafsirs i want to know what my allah is saying to me not to it's only one ayat let's leave it aside let's move on to the next one no i want to see what allah is saying to me so he would read 100 tafsirs and after reading 100 tafsirs then he would make dua allahumma muallima ibrahim allimni allahumma muallima ibrahim fahimni oh the teacher of ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam teach me as well. and he says when i would not still understand and i would go to a masjid which was deserted I would go to a masjid which was not very frequent which was empty and I would go in that masjid and I would rub my face all over the floor and I would look to Allah and say Allah teach me teach me what you what are you saying in this Quran so second right we have is to understand what Allah is saying and the third right is that we after understanding we act upon what the Quran is saying. this is the whole purpose of the Quran kudal lil muttaqin is guidance for the believers guidance for muttaqin so once you understand what allah is saying then we have to compel ourselves you know i have to act upon i have heard it now i have to become a good believer i have to become a strong believer so when a person does these three requirements then inshallah he will become the beloved of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will become a blessed person just like the quran is blessed he will also become blessed and inshallah he will be elevated his, his ranks will be increased of the shafi sahab rahmatullah alayhi mentions that nowadays he says the main reason why this was 20 so years ago maybe even more he wrote in one of his kitabs that the main reasons for the afflictions and the sufferings that are descending on the muslim ummah is because of the disconnection with the quran the time they stop dis- the time they disconnected from the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to send down affliction and has sheikh ulhin rahmatullah alayhi the ustad of azma ashafi tamil rahmatullah alayhi a great alim sheikh ul hind was known as sheikh ul hind the, the teacher of hindustan the muft as a shaykh tamim after you say that people have done injustice with my teacher he's not sheikh ul hind he's not this, just the sheikh of hind india he's sheikh ul alam he was a, he was so knowledgeable he had he was the sheikh of sheikh of the whole world he was put in the jail by the british when they went to india and so many years he stayed in jail and then he, was, he came out when he came out ulama came to see him and there's a big masjid they all came to see him and listen to his words so he said while in jail i pondered i pondered on the decline of the ummah why are the ummah going down what's the reason why there is a decline in the ummah so he said i came to two i came to a conclusion of two things 
Number one, that the Ummah has left the Quran. The Ummah have, have left reciting the Quran, understanding the Quran, Amal on the Quran. So there is the automatic there is decline. And the second, up in ikhtilaf within people, arguments, fights within people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us this opportunity. It's very important. So this was the first point. To show how important it is. Because when a person has importance of something in his heart, then he is readily available away. If they know how important it is to earn money, so the time the job goes straight away, we'll be looking for another job. Because we know how important money is. Without money, our life is at standstill. When we understand how important the Quran, then our life will also become standstill. You know, I don't know this. I need to understand this. I need to know what is going on here. And the second point I want to mention today, before we start the see, is the Ada of the Majlis. When we sit in the Majlis, etiquette, manners of the Majlis. Everything in life, every act we do has different requirements. And if a person follows the requirements, if he goes according to the way he's been shown, then he will grasp the required fruits. He's been told to work like a set, in a certain way, and he works like this way, he will get, he will get uh, money his post. He will get uh, another post, higher post, because the workers will see, the businessmen will see that this person is doing according to the rules. So when you follow the rules and the requirements, then inshallah you will get the fruits. Same with this majlis. If you follow the correct adab and the correct requirements, then inshallah at the end we will get uh, fruits, we will get the, we will reap, we will grasp the benefits, which is the love of Allah SWT, the closeness of Allah SWT, a yearning in the heart to become good believers. That's why this person called Yusuf ibn Hussein, he used to say, With respect you will understand ilm. If you have respect for the majlis, you will, have, you will understand. And the first and foremost thing is intention. Why are we sitting here today? Why have we taken our time? Why have we come here? We need to understand. The intent, intention should be right. Is it because my friends are here? Is it because I sit, I've got nothing to do at home, I'll sit here? The intention should be first and foremost for the pleasure of Allah. This act is something that Allah loves. So if I sit in this majlis, Allah will also love me. This thing invites the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa So first foremost, niyat. And number two, that by listening attentively and by listening, I will be able to understand where Allah's pleasure lies in. Which things Allah gets happy with and which things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like, He gets displeased with. And I will act according to that. This should be our intention. And number two is, how should we listen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, the Quran is When the Quran is being recited, fastam you. Listen attentively. In Arabic, there are two words. Samiya yasmau and istama yastamiyu. They both mean listening. But samiya means listening. You could be talking and listening. You could be playing on your phone and listening. This is listening. And istama yastamiyu means listen attentively, meaning complete focus. So the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used for the Quran is Wa Kuriyal Quranu Fastamiyu. When the Quran is being recited, first time you listen attentively. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give Musa alayhi salatu wa salam nubuat. He said, Wa naqtar tuka ya Musa, wa naqtar tuka. First time, lima you are. Oh Musa, we have chosen you as the Nabi. We are going to bestow a prophet on you. First time, lima you are. Now listen very carefully to what we are going to say to you. What we are going to reveal to you. Commentators say, as soon as Musa alayhi salam heard this ayat, first time, straight away he folded his hands. And he lowered his chin. And he started listening. Wahab ibn Munabbi, rahmatullahi says, that why is istima? How do you listen attentively? So he says, number one is focusing, no movement, motionless, no fidgeting, no playing with the clothes, no going through the phones. And if you read, if you read the hadith of Rasulullah, he mentioned that the Sahabas, when they used to be in the company of Rasulullah, he's mentioned that he was, they used to sit in such a way that even birds could come and sit on them. Meaning they were so still. Birds only come and sit on things that are still. Little movement and they fly away. Meaning they were so engrossed in 100% attention of Rasulullah that they wouldn't even move. So first and foremost, point of listening attentively is, is, is motionless. Number two, lowering the gaze. Lowering the gaze, either listening like this or looking at the speaker. Looking at the speaker or looking down. Now, Mali Prahmatullah Ali used to have a masjid in Medina Munawara. And 
Abu Musab says, Abu Musab says that when we used to go, Kunna, when we used to go by him, that nobody used to turn to another person. When we used to sit by Imam Malik, there were so many people that it was closer, we would argue over sitting in the majlis. And as soon as we got our space, then nobody would turn to another person. Everybody was fixed to Imam Malik. No movement. Number three, listening. Lend your complete ear to the speaker. Whatever he's saying, listen carefully because you need to listen because this is the tool that will absorb and then it will go from here into the heart. If there is distraction, then you will get corrupted. It will, it will get half. It will reach half to the heart. So for you to gain complete knowledge, it has to go with undivided attention from the ear into the heart. And number five, when, when we're listening, then if you have chance, then write things down. Al-ilmu saydun. The poet says al-ilmu saydun. Ilm, knowledge is like a, like a game. Game, not, not the game people play on the phones. The game when you go hunting. The animal that you're going to shoot is called a game. So you go on your horse and there's a deer and you're going to shoot the deer. You're going to throw an arrow at it. That a deer is called a game. So how does that game, how does that animal come into your control? Shooting the arrow. If you shoot the arrow and you get it, that, that, is, that deer is yours. It's for you. The skin is yours. The food is yours. The meat is yours. So the poet says that ilm, ilm, knowledge is like this game. So how do, you, how do you grasp it? How do you catch it? You can't use arrows. Write it. If you've written it, it's yours. If you've not written it, there's a chance that you might forget. So another point is writing. And the last point is when we sit in majalis, it is important that we prioritize. After Maghrib, after Asr, you know that there's a majlis, prioritize it. No, whatever happens, I need to sit in the majlis. Whatever happens, I need to sit in the majlis. I can't miss the majlis. Absence will bring be barakati. You came one day, you missed one day. You came one day, you missed one day. You will be barakati there. But if you come continuously, you will understand the whole tafsir, you will understand the whole story, and there will be barakat, and you will also gain much, most of it. Imam Malik Rahmatullahi had a student, Yahya bin Yahya al-Andalusi. Imam Malik Rahmatullahi wrote a kitab al-Muwatta. Al-Muwatta Imam Malik, filled with ahadith. And the kitab that we have today, in those days when they used to teach, so the teacher would bring his book like this. And everybody would have their own notepads. And the teacher would read the hadith, and every person would write. Of his family would write, of his mom would write, of his baby would write. And then that's your copy, that's your copy, that's your copy. So everybody has their copy. The copy we have right now that is famous amongst everybody is the copy of Yahya bin Yahya al-Andalusi. This particular student, his copy is the famous one. What's his story? He went all the way from Andalus, Spain, all the way to Medina Munawara to study by Imam Malik. Thousands of miles across the desert, over the ocean. And he got there. And he studied. And he studied very hard and so much respect. He's mentioned that he had so much respect that when he used to turn the pages, he was so careful not to make noise that he would give taklif to Imam Malik Ramatullah. And the main story of him, once Imam Malik Ramatullah came in the room to teach, came in the masjid or wherever he was to teach, and there was no students, only him sat on, the, on his own. So Imam Malik Ramatullah goes, Yeah, yeah, where's the problem? So he says, We were sat, and all of a sudden there was a noise outside, Al feel, Al feel, Al feel. Elephant, elephant, elephant. So we've never seen an elephant, so all the students have gone outside to see the elephant. Makkah, Medina, you only see you only see camels, sheep, goats. You don't see elephants in Makkah, Makkah, Medina, Munawar. So it's something new. It's like we sat here and someone says giraffe, giraffe. We've never seen a giraffe. So some might go outside. So your Mari comes to the goes to that Yahya in Yahya and Lucy student. Acha beta, it looks like you've probably seen an elephant in, in, in Spain and Andalus. You must have seen an elephant, that's why you've not gone. He says, no, no, Hazrat, I've not seen an elephant as well. I've never seen an elephant. I don't know what al feel is. Besides, and when you've prayed the Quran, Alam Tara Kaiba for Allah, Bukha be Ashab al feel. And you want to know why is this Ashab al feel? Why is this people of the elephant? What's the elephant? So he stayed in his place and he didn't go. So Mali goes, so why did you not go? He said, Hazrat, I traveled from Andalus, from Spain, thousands of miles, to Medina Munawara. I didn't come to look at the elephant. I came to listen to your hadith. Imam Malik, imagine the happiness Imam Malik come to his heart in that time. Imagine this, what must have transpired in his heart. What dua must have come out for him? 
that today the, the, the water that we have is his water. So another point is at a priority. That there's something other thing. No, no, I, my Quran is more important now. My hadith is more important. I need to sit. So inshallah, when we have these adabs in our life, I'm sitting. Try. If you, if you, if you can't sit like this, and for a little while, try. You know, sitting posture is very important. When Hazrat Jibir salam, came to Huzul Sassam in a human form, he came first, not a ruk, but a ruk, but he sat like this. And Imam Nawi says that this is the best sitting for Tali. Because the unknown, also, because it has a lot of adab inside it, honor, respect. So if you can sit like this for a little bit, two minutes, three minutes, and then your legs start hurting, then sit normally. And then when you think you've got a bit more energy, then sit like that. All these things will be in Barakat. When Barakat comes inside, then Allah SWT will give us a trophy to listen and act upon what's been said. So today I thought that before we start the actual lesson, we will go through some basic adabs and the importance of the Quran. Because when the importance goes into something on someone's heart, then to act upon it and to listen about it becomes very easy. So inshallah, today we will just leave on this. And inshallah, next week we will start from Surah Yusuf. Allah SWT mentioned, We will mention to you the best story. So when Allah SWT mentions this is the best story, surely it will be the best story. A lot of lessons to be learned in there. That jealousy, the outcome of the people that had hatred, jealousy, and the person that was being, the people that was being the victim, what Allah SWT gave him. And a lot of story lessons for Surah Muhammad. So inshallah, next Wednesday we will Start from Surah Yusuf and inshallah slowly, slowly, may Allah SWT accept and we will go through. May Allah SWT make this a lifelong journey of ours that we learn the Quran, understand the Quran. May Allah SWT gives us tawfiq to sit on a weekly basis and accept what's been said and what's been held.